Hey guys, welcome to Health Talks with Bukamasom Tim Kulu. Yes, that is me and today I'm going to tell you guys more about peripheral artery disease. It is similar to coronary artery disease. The only difference is that it's in a different part of the body. But I like to abbreviate it to PAD or P-A-D. So let's get into this video and see exactly what happens in the body in peripheral artery disease and so forth. So PAD is the buildup of plaque in the arteries that are situated outside the brain and the heart. So this can be any like any artery outside of those areas but it generally does affect your legs more than any other place now because PAD generally affects the legs I will be using the legs uh, as an example throughout but don't forget that it can affect any artery in the body it means kidneys liver stomach intestines anywhere in the body so the same thing can happen at um, any part of the body in those arteries as well so you have an input this input is an unhealthy lifestyle yes bad diet physical inactivity high stress levels and other comorbidities such as obesity age family history diabetes etc these all can lead to damage of your arteries which is a blood vessel now when you have damage to your arteries it loses its integrity and um, it doesn't function optimally which means that more toxins can flow in and out of the wall of your artery and one of the toxins that really likes to flow in and just stay there is bad cholesterol when this happens it allows for plaque to form now think of it like a pimple or a um, boil or wart whatever you have that bulge that forms on your skin that happens in your artery as well but now plaque continues to grow and unfortunately your arteries are only like little round circles so if it continues to grow eventually it will block the entire artery and when that happens or when it is um, almost blocked or like there's less fl blood flow in that area, you have less oxygen and nutrients going to the tissues in that area. And in the legs, it is generally your muscles and your tendons and all that, which makes activities such as walking or standing for long, whatever, very, very painful and difficult because it can't keep up with the demand of you know contracting and using energy and using oxygen and nutrients and all this to help you walk etc so it can lead to stuff like that but just like if you were to bump into something and that wart or that um, pimple would break a plaque can break as well and the immediate response would be to to plug it or buy um, with blood so forming a blood clot to prevent bleeding out or whatever so in your arteries what happens is that you sort of plug the plaque from bleeding out lack of a better word or explanation and what happens is you have a blood clot that forms there which can eventually completely block your artery but it can also just decide to break off you know be naughty break off and wander throughout your entire arterial system and block another artery in another place leading to the same effects as it would in your uh, leg so that is generally what generally what PAD is that formation of plaque in your in your artery that eventually breaks causes a blood clot which can also break and wander off and block other parts within your arterial system Unfortunately, people who do have 
PAD are at a high risk for a heart attack as well as a stroke. And this is not because that that blood clot could one well this is also because that blood clot could, could wander into those areas and block those arteries. But having PAD is sort of an indication that you have high cholesterol or high bad cholesterol in your body. And this can lead to damage in other arteries throughout the entire body. And one place that it, do, that it does like is your heart as well as your brain. So you can have that same effect of a plaque formation, blood clot, etc. forming in the heart as well as the brain, leading to a heart attack or a stroke. And so people who have PAD are sort of, it's sort of like a warning sign that something worse could happen. So it happens in stages generally as the disease progresses and firstly you'll have no symptoms. This means there's adequate oxygen and nutrients going to the muscles in your leg, in your leg or legs. Then you'll be uh, experience intermittent pain. This means that you're able to walk um, but after a few meters, uh, several meters, maybe like 200 or 500 meters, you experience excruciating pain and the more it progresses and um, the less you're able to walk without experiencing pain. Now, think of like leg day, okay? Leg day, walking down stairs, you walk funny, or that's the type of pain that you're likely to experience. Maybe a little bit worse, but um, that's the best example I can think of. After that, you'll start to experience pain while resting. So just chilling, sitting on a chair, having something to drink, watching TV, your legs will be in pain. And that's when there's um, adequate blockage and not enough oxygen or nutrients going through. And when it is like near blockage, wounds won't heal um, quickly. So if you bruise or bruise yourself in your legs or you um, scratch yourself or something, that wound won't heal effectively because there's not enough blood, oxygen, um, white blood cells, etc. going there to heal the area. And then lastly, your cells will begin to die when that artery is completely blocked, which means that your muscles begin to die and eventually you may need to get an amputation, so to cut off your leg because so much um, death has happened in that area. So to manage this, you want to change your lifestyle. Keep it healthy by eating healthy and by quitting smoking, drinking less alcohol, decreasing stress, exercising. Got to get those muscles contracting and blood flowing in those areas and exercise does help with that. And also managing any other comorbidities if you have by taking your medication as prescribed by your doctor okay that is very important not to le uh, cause any other imbalances by not following what the doctor has prescribed for you also if the blockage is pretty bad there may be uh, you may undergo surgical interventions to try and open up the artery sort of like how you do in coronary artery disease or by um linking another artery to that area to allow blood to flow in that area. So by a bypass surgery is what it is called. The main cause is atherosclerosis. I do struggle with that word. So atherosclerosis, which is a, a medical term for the buildup of plaque in your arteries, uh, caused by bad cholesterol. So generally your risk factors for heart disease and stroke, so age, family history, obesity, diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, etc. can cause atherosclerosis which can lead to PAD. So if you want to prevent getting PAD, you want to prevent getting atherosclerosis making sure you take care of yourself by eating healthy, exercising, decreasing stress, and again, managing 
your comorbidities that you may have. Taking your diabetes medication correctly, taking your high blood pressure medication correctly, taking your high cholesterol medication correctly, etc., will help in preventing that progression to PAD. All right. Thanks, guys, for giving us a watch. Please do leave a comment if you have any questions, any concerns, anything that you want to say about this video to me. Um, do, do, do drop that comment. Also, do subscribe to my channel if you are new. And if you do want to learn about different health conditions as well as my life story of being diagnosed with a chronic illness. And... Yes, do share, please do share this video, share the word, let people know that they always, um, that they can manage their health and all this and sort of see exactly what happens in their bodies when they have a specific disease. So yes, don't keep it to yourself, share, okay? It's good to share, sharing is caring. Guys, have a great week and I'll see you soon. Bye.